uh, the waiting time for customers at the branches uh, that is uh, the the uh, that is another important aspect as far as atm or electronic banking is concerned then quick and early implementation definitely uh, another point uh, that all of you will have to uh, you know take note of then the um, the enhanced security and audit control because you know uh, though these transactions are happening electronically there is an immediate uh, you know check on that transaction uh, as far as uh, uh, as uh, you know as far as the debit or credit is concerned and whenever it is uh, you know whenever there is a, a reason for reversal that also happens automatically and this is being done by way of an audit online uh, right so uh, that that is also being taken care whereas in the normal scenario where in a physical environment all these things could take time and you may come across uh, a mistake after it is committed and maybe two or three hours down the line by that time some damage might have already been done whereas in this case it is uh, uh, that particular issue is taken care i'm not saying that even in this case things will be uh, will not happen or uh, you may not have uh, uh, you know uh, issues with regard to payments or reversals i'm not saying that but the in, uh, the incidences of the, those nature uh, of that nature are less when compared to that of a manual scenario so that is uh, uh, that is the most important part then you have uh, we talked about enhanced security and audit control because that is also most important as far as customers are concerned then managing the network uh, that that you you know we mentioned uh, that atms are available uh, you know across it is not just the branch uh, that uh, gives the service so you need to have an efficient network that will manage and which will be maintained all the time, say 24 bar 7. In most of the cases, it may be a little difficult, but the, the efficiency or the, or the efficiency level that every branch or every bank will look at will be to have uh, at least 98, 99% uptime for all these devices. Okay. So the network management has to be very effective for that. Uh, the the people who are um, uh, uh, basically responsible, uh, maybe at the branch level, or at an outsourced uh, management level, or at a central level management level. I, it can be within the bank, or it may be the network management may be outsourced, depending upon the bank's policy. Or sometimes the network management will be management of certain say uh, five or ten branches will be given to one particular branch under which these uh, atms or devices are attached so it could be uh, different in different scenarios so uh, that is also very important because when it is locally done then uh, the remedies the remedial issues or the remedial work is also getting done locally so there will be an enhanced um, uh, you know effectiveness in the way in which the service is rendered but the problem here is sometimes when there is an issue and it needs a higher level escalation it takes a lot of time to get it rectified so that that problem is also there yeah then the cost of ownership is predictable that is uh, you know uh, with regard to atms okay uh, uh sometimes it is a branch owned atm or the bank owned atm and you have you you have uh you, i am sure you must have come to know about uh, the white label atms and the brown label atms okay the white label atms are uh, where the ownership as well as the uh you know the management of those atms are outsourced to uh, another agency who are uh, who, where the regulator has permitted to uh, engage the services of such outsourced agencies which are approved okay by them okay so such atms where you will not find any name for a, you know a name of a bank attached to those atms right 
the ownership of the ATM will be with that agency. The network management will be that agency. Okay. So uh, any bank uh, card can be uh, transactable on such ATMs. And in the case of a brown label ATM, it will be uh, you know where the the ownership of the ATM will be with the bank, but the uh, uh, you know the management part of it will be with an outsourced agency. Yeah. And then, of course, the other benefit is uh, most of your uh, you know transaction. It is not just uh, uh, withdrawing cash. Depositing cash can also be done on the ATM, where you have a, 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 a you know cash deposit machine. You can deposit checks. You can make inquiries into your account. You can make a request for a checkbook. Uh, you can make a request for a statement. You can take a mini statement from the ATM. And then the ATMs, the, the number of uh, uh, jobs that an ATM can do is innumerable. But only thing is, in a in a regulated framework, RBI has permitted only certain uh, uh, you know transactions which the banks can do on the ATM. There are the ATMs can even do um, uh, you know uh, uh, can dispose of tickets uh, for a cricket match or for a uh, no, uh, theater show or anything, even it can be programmed that way. So, uh, but only thing is, in our scenario, in our uh, you know, uh, economic system uh, or in the, in the banking sector, there are certain accepted ways uh, or permitted ways and that alone the banks uh, undertake or the ATMs undertake uh, within that put, uh, regulated purview. The next one is uh, uh, with regard to credit cards. Okay, so this is another way of uh, electronic payments. All of you know. I am sure most of you uh, will be user also of a credit card, and debit card is something which uh, all of us have. Uh, in, a, in a in a in a credit scenario, in a credit card scenario. Uh, Basically, it is an instrument for payment. All of you know that. By using it, the cardholder can obtain goods and services uh, from merchant establishments. Uh, it can be a uh, it can be a, a shopping mall. It can be a travel agency. It can be a railway station, a railway ticketing counter, uh, uh, or it can be from an airline's office. Or for that matter, it can be uh, for purchase of uh, goods or services online uh, from the internet, from uh, Flipkart, from uh, Amazon, or from any other uh, opportunity that is available for purchase. Right? Basically, that is uh, that uh, that is what we use the the credit card with a uh, uh, with a credit limit attached to that card. So what happens is here, uh, the outstanding amount on account of uh, the use of credit card is uh, payable by the cardholder uh, to the issuing bank uh, at different periodic intervals, which is called the billing periods. So there will be a there will be a billing period, and you, as a credit card holder, you will be intimated that billing period, and your payment period you will get about 10 to 15 days extra for that normally that billing period is for a month and for payment of that outstanding amount uh, uh, you know pertaining to that particular bill you get another 10 to 12 days uh, for your payment so your credit get extended to about uh, nearly uh, 50 days uh, in some cases depending upon the billing cycle so how, uh, no, how does this function uh, there are a number of parties uh, involved. Uh, there is a credit card, uh, uh, you know. The, uh, the, the, there is a, a an issuing uh, an issuer to the credit card. Normally, a bank. Then there is a settler, uh, which is called uh, who will who will settle or who will authorize these transactions. That is behind the scene, behind the curtain. Uh, that is uh, a, a, a person like. Um, a visa or a mastercard or a diner or a american express or your rupee okay 
uh, rupee is that of the national payments corporation of india so and so there will be basically an agreement between the card holder and uh, and the card issuer and they will be given specific uh, uh, you know limits uh, with regard to the usage uh, or for e-commerce for uh, you know for your uh, transactions and merchant outlets and uh, within that limit nowadays you can also you as a card holder can also settle the uh, can set the limits supposing i have a limit of say uh, 5 lakhs on my card but i can set the limit to just 25000 per transaction that is that is my prerogative as a user of the credit card and that 25000 you can again set for uh, merchant establishments or for uh, international transactions or for uh, you know uh, making payment to specific agencies so where you can make those changes so that prerogative is given to the card holder so within the overall limit of 5 lakhs you have your own ways of managing the credit so that is the convenience that is given to the card holders in the current scenario so that is the kind of technology that we have developed over a period of time and that is what the technology offers as a great convenience and uh, 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 you know ease of operation as far as the customer is concerned okay so uh, you know what what happens basically uh, again i don't have to repeat that when you make purchases on a credit card the uh, the on a day to day basis it gets uh, noted in your bill and on a specific billing period on a specific date the outstanding is conveyed to the issuer and then uh, and, and the the same intimation comes to the card holder also and on the before on or before the specified date of payment you make the payment for that outstanding amount and then uh, and then it is a revolving credit then once you make that uh, once you make that payment your initial limit of whatever is given uh, for that credit card that limit gets restored supposing you are given 5 lakhs limit and uh, within one month uh, one month of that billing period you spend 1 lakh so your available limit is only 4 lakhs because you have already utilized 1 lakh but then the moment you pay that 1 lakh your the limit gets restored as 5 lakh so that is also a revolving credit system which is of great uh, use to customers and it is a uh, convenience also and nowadays i don't have to say this you have different forms of pay making payments also even if your outstanding is one lakh on that card you have an option to pay it in emis subject to payment of interest and other charges whatever is prescribed so you have you know uh, that will be a little costly as far as the customer is concerned but then the the facility is uh, given to the customer so that is uh, that is the most important aspect of that then you have debit cards and all of the cards uh, the payment comes from your uh, from your account again uh, when you use your debit card at a merchant outlet or at a, uh, or for a purchase online the debit happens on an immediate basis unlike a credit card where it happens only at the prescribed interval here it happens on an immediate basis okay so uh, the uh, you can use the card successfully only if you have sufficient balance in your account otherwise it goes for a toss yeah so uh, you know the when you use the card it gets uh, debited to your account and then you get your service or uh, you know whatever purchase transaction that you have done is taken care that's on the debit card that's on the uh, credit card and the debit card then you have uh, other types of payments you know you have different uh, types of cards uh, you know uh, you can call it gold card your premium card your royal card uh, you know depending on the type of facilities that are attached to that card because you know when you have a particular type of card you enjoy certain benefits 
uh, like discounts uh, you know uh, when you when you buy certain things electronic goods or you know you must have i don't have to uh, say this in detail because all of you might have been beneficiaries on such uh, you you use a particular type of card or a particular issuer's card then you get a discount additional discount of 5% or 10% or you get a cash back even so that kind of card then you have smart cards specific usage like when you uh, you know uh, you know for your usage or at uh, at a specific and by using a mass rapid transport system or uh, or your metro or even smart cards are there for specific uh, you are still on the same atm slide Sorry. are you still on the atm slide no no i have moved to the slide no sir it's not moving it has not moved and then i think there is some Participants problem participants kindly respond because um, yeah, yeah. it's not aware I mean, not, see uh, these slides are not moving i don't know you have not moved the slides, sir. You are still on. Now it is uh, not moving. Then there is something wrong with the. Uh... Yeah, now it is other types of payments. You have come to other type of payments. Yes, uh, that is what. Uh, the... Okay, so you can do one thing, sir. Okay, when you now, are now you are able to see other types of payments. Yeah, now okay. we are, can see other types of payment. But uh, when you change the slide, you can tell them, sir, so that if the if it is not changing, they no, can no. update. Okay, now what are you seeing? Other types of payments, check truncation, telebanking, internet banking, okay, and okay. all. So that means, see, I, I was using that uh, presentation in the slide format. I think when you use the slide format, when you change the slides, it doesn't come. Now I'm in the uh, in the processing uh, format only. Like this is uh, the uh, slide number six. Yes. Yes. Okay. They, they missed slide the other number. slide. Uh, yeah. Other types of payment. So I, I was gold. talking. I was talking on slide number five. Like okay. Okay. Card, okay. Smart now card. you're on five. Uh, good that you. I I request our people. You know, please. Uh, you know, escalate when you uh, find a problem like this. Because okay. sitting here, I may not be able to see because I am changing the slides. I, I know under the impression that it, the same thing is happening as and when you are viewing it. Okay, good that you uh, told me about this. Okay, but now you are able to see, right? Yeah, yeah, I am seeing. Participant, okay. someone of you, uh, I may not be sitting uh, here. Sometimes yes, I may miss it also. But someone, uh, when Sar is cha not changing, you just tell. Yeah, yeah. inform you. So right now I'm on other types of payments where we were talking about gold cards, your smart cards. Then you have switch cards also. Certain certain specific switches only it operates, and that you know it you know allows transactions on that particular switch. Then you have co-branded cards. I'm sure uh, you know many of you must have uh, seen this, especially for refueling our vehicles, uh, whether it is car, scooter, or bike, or whatever. Now you have cards, uh, you know, which are uh, linked or co-branded with an oil company or with a, a retail, um, you know, petroleum dealer. So such co-branded cards. Uh, you know, this is not. I know I was just giving an example. These co-branded cards come for other uh, types of uh, businesses also, like air travel. You have you have for clear trip. You can have a co-branded card. Some of the card issuers have done that. Then for hotel staying, uh, you can have um, uh, a co-branded card like Marriott. Uh, they have co-branded cards with most of the banks, uh, the hotel chains. So similarly, they are co-branded cards where the the usage, you know, where the with the with the increasing frequency of usage, the customer gets lot of benefits. Similarly, airline companies. When you choose one airline company for continuous uh, travel. Then you know they have co-branded cards with uh, you know uh, different banks, where the customers stand to benefit with the increased frequency of such travel, either by way of benefits in terms of uh, uh, you know discounts on pricing, on the travel price, or getting additional fringe benefits like food, other things on the on the aircraft. And then there are certain cards like Visa, uh, Rupee, or uh, Diners. Offering lounge services, free lounge services in airports. I'm sure uh, you must be knowing about this. 
because when you go to an airport and try to have food uh, uh, you know at one of the outlets it will be exorbitantly high price okay see a coffee must co may cost you about 150 to 200 rupees one coffee whereas if you have this card and use it at the, the use use the same card at the lounge for just rupees 2 for 2 rupees you may enjoy a full sumptuous lunch or a sumptuous breakfast or a sumptuous dinner okay so these are the benefits that come out of such uh, cards and then you have electronic wallets like you are you know wallets where you have like your pay uh, you know your paytm initially what we had now we use it for uh, you know these paytm google pay phone pay and all we link it to our bank account and then directly uh, you know it goes from the uh, account from your account but whereas a wallet is concerned electronic wallet is concerned it is by itself a wall uh, by an account okay so you put money into that it is like an impressed cash like what you use for your you know uh, in a, in a typically in a branch what you use for your internal expenses it is an impressed account you put some money into that then your courier then all other uh, incidental expenses and all after one week's time when the 10000 rupees becomes your balance becomes only 2000 you take another 8000 and make it uh, uh, 10000 again that kind of a scenario so in, in a wallet it is just like your purse that you handle no? when you as and when you spend you re, uh, reinforce with more money uh, more uh, cash into that account <coughs> So what happens is the wallet, the money is lying in the wallet gets get debited and not the account. So you may transfer, say, 5,000 rupees from your account to the wallet and then you start spending from the wallet. And so the you may um, uh, spend 10 rupees, you may spend 5 rupees, you may spend 5,000 rupees also, depending on what is available in that wallet. You can't spend more than what is, your account may have more money. But when you are using a wallet, <coughs> only the balance that is lying in the wallet gets used. So railway, uh, railways, for instance, they have a wallet like that. And there are many other, uh, uh, you know, uh, people like your uh, the corporations, your uh, utilities, electricity boards, uh, uh, water authorities. All of them have many of them have come out with uh, wallets. So you put your bulk amount in that and then use it for your regular payments. Okay. So that is the benefit of the uh, wallet that you have. There is no need. To, the benefit, again, if you look at the benefits, there is no need to carry cash. Uh, <laughs> there is less of complications. And there, uh, I'm using uh, a check. Yeah. Anybody has a question? Well, I can't hear it properly. <laughs> Slide other type of payment. Sorry, I'm not able to hear you. Start presenting other types of payments like. Sorry, I can't hear you at all. Presently, what was your question? Start presenting payment slide only. No, it is on other types of payments, yes. I am talking about other types of payments only. Okay, okay. So what are the what are the benefits that are there? Uh, uh, the, there is no need to carry cash because these are all questions that you may face, uh, you know, at your interview or your exam level. What are the benefits? Okay, uh, it, it is it is quick as far as the customer is concerned, and uh, the time involved in completing the transaction is very less. Okay, when compared to a manual scenario. And it is much more easier than using a check because check has to go for clearing. Then the, it has to get cleared and then it has to reflect as an available balance in your account. And then only the other party will uh, part with the uh, purchase that you have done. Right. So uh, whereas in the case of a transfer from a wallet, it gets uh, reflected in the account on an immediate basis and the transaction is completed immediately. So that is the benefit. Okay. It can also be, uh, and some of these wallets, you can withdraw cash also, you know, because the, uh, the latest scenario uh, permits withdrawal of cash also. Earlier, it was not permitted. We will come to that in a different slide, okay? <clears throat> and the holders can also have a record of the transaction. 
just like your statement of account you can have a statement of your wallet transactions so it is easier for you to track your expenditure so if you are going to be a very very uh, uh, you know uh, if you are going to be very financially conscious and you want to spend only this much of amount in a particular month towards certain expenses then it will be wise thing to transfer that amount to a wallet and keep spending from that wallet so as and when you exhaust that wallet whatever money that lies in the wallet gets exhausted you will not be tempted to spend more whereas in the case of a credit card what happens is so long as you have a limit that is outstanding or a limit that is available you will keep on spending because it is you know for your financial planning sometimes it gets uh, you know uh, very difficult for you because you have a limit you tend to you get it used when you visit a shopping mall or when you visit a uh, you know clothing store or when you visit a supermarket sometimes it goes totally out of your control okay whereas if you have a wallet and you have you have decided that okay i will spend only so much this month then you put that much amount only in the wallet and use only the wallet and not the not anything else so there is, these are all conveniences <clears throat> conveniences that the customer gets over a period of time right and that is that is where technology has helped the customer okay where to make that choice and to make it happen on an instant basis not it, 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 it there is no any time lag it happens instantly yeah so that is the benefit and it can be issued uh, to any individual without assessing credit worthiness what happens is in as far as a wallet is concerned if you have money in the other account you can this wallet can be issued to anyone and the money will come into the wallet and then it will spend the current uh, the uh, digital currency also works on a similar uh, platform we will look at it in a later slide now i am moving to the next slide uh which are the other type of payments i am continuing this is again a continuation of the other slide are you able to see this yes sir okay next slide okay uh, and just to make sure <clears throat> the other one is check truncation this is another uh, you know other another uh, great advancement in the uh, in the payment settlement process check truncation in the earlier scenario you can imagine that a check uh, you know which is uh, encashed in a check which is of a bank issued in punjab which is uh, cleared in calicut or in trivandrum the amount of trouble it used to take to get it sent across to the other clearing and then getting it collected but now with a clear turnaround time for collection of these checks the image goes to that concerned bank and then the clearing happens i don't have to repeat on this uh, because uh, you know if you are looking at the technology part of it there will be a lot of things to uh, be explained but then the processing part of it is such such checks are uh, you know put into an image format and then cleared centrally on a platform right which are called clearing grids at different uh, you know uh, uh, hubs uh, within the country okay so then the settlement happens within a clear so i can't hear please unmute sir please unmute hello you able to hear me yeah. Am I okay. Okay. Yes, okay. Sir. No, okay. Sir. Okay. So, uh, check truncation. 
is uh, one such benefit for customers for faster and easy clearance of checks uh, from uh, all other corners of the country uh, whether it is uh, from one end to the other from one corner to the other it has become a much more easier way of settling so that that is again uh, through electronic processing that is a benefit then you have telebanking facilities telebanking facilities where you know even uh, you know uh, with regard to your pins with regard to your request for uh, you know uh, a statement of account with regard to your request for a checkbook with regard to your uh, inquiries with regard to a particular transaction that reflects in your account so all these are possible through the telebanking even without approaching a bank branch right so that is the benefit the customer has that uh, 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 some of these telebanking centers are 24 bar 7 some of them have uh, prescribed timing uh, you know uh, depending on the kind of query that the customer has so <clears throat> So that is the benefit as far as the uh, uh, telebanking is concerned. Again, uh, again, uh, a product of technology, right? Then the next one is internet banking. Internet banking again, I don't have to uh, explain it in detail. It is by uh, internet banking. For, you no, know, while you are on the go or while you are sitting in an office or at your own home, you can transact your business. How it happens is. There is an internet service provider, and the bank has a, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, has a, uh, you know, uh, has a way of communicating. The bank server has a way of communicating with that particular internet service provider, and with the use of uh, the um, Chrome, with the use of a, uh, you know, web browser called chrome or your mozilla or your uh, you know internet explorer by using that you can do your transactions with a login and password and the the communications that go from the from your uh, you know your point of access to the service provider and to the server of the bank will be in an encrypted form okay so uh, it will be in a secure fashion so that the customers uh, you know security is uh, taken care so that is the uh, benefit as far as internet banking is concerned and the customer has all the facilities like funds transfer rtgs neft applying for a share requesting for a checkbook <clears throat> then uh, oh, uh, sometimes uh, you know looking uh, you know uh, making payment to his credit card um, uh, you know all these facilities are there through internet banking uh, of course e-commerce like uh, you know flipkart amazon everywhere you can do it through uh, internet banking booking your tickets rail air ship everything that is possible through internet banking same is the case with mobile banking mobile banking where you know you you use a separate application which is similar to that of internet banking and mobile banking also supports all these services you know through the use of a smartphone where you can use for your you know you can apply for shares uh, uh, which are coming in the initial public offer hope i am audible because i don't hear any response if somebody has a doubt please raise it okay so in mobile banking also you have all these facilities hope i am audible at least somebody say yes yes sir you are yes, audible sir. Okay, so in mobile banking also the same the situation is same similar to that of internet banking, but they work on different uh, uh, you know in different ways. But the kinds of service that is available on internet banking, most of it or sometimes more is available on mobile banking also. Here also you you can make a request for your checkbook, your statement of account. You can see the statement of your account. You can see the cards which are attached to your account, like a debit card or credit card. You can make an application for a share in the capital market through the ASBA process. Uh, I know you. Uh, I hope all of you know the ASBA process, where where you can make you are making an application. You are an making an application for a share. You uh, know through uh, through a balance that is blocked in your account. Okay. 
so uh, uh, that is also possible through your mobile banking it is possible through your internet banking also you can have a details of your dmat account there <clears throat> you can you can view the balances you can uh, you can initiate transactions all that is possible similarly uh, you, you know you have the option of uh, uh, you know seeing the balances of your provident fund account ppf public provident account found account you have the um, you know option of seeing your national pension scheme account nps scheme account here so all these facilities are now being offered you can make a request for a change of your home branch supposing you are in punjab now and then you want you have got a transfer to kolkata then uh, once you reach kolkata you can make a request for a change of your home branch from amritsar to uh, kolkata that is possible so all these is uh, <clears throat> all these facilities are currently now available in mobile banking also okay so that is the benefit uh, that customers have through internet banking and mobile banking then you have cash management services cash management services all of you know this is basically for uh, msmes or corporate houses for their collections across the country because they will have customers all over the country and they will have the customers will deposit cash or checks into the uh, uh, into the bank account that you have and the bank offers a cash management services which is which is uh, much more quicker much more efficient in terms of giving information to the client that such and such client in chandigarh has credited or has deposited a check into your account on this this date and it will be cleared on and it is possible that it will be cleared the next day so this kind of information and similar uh, deposits will be happening from all over the country so your receivables management as far as a company or as far as a corporate or as far as a, uh, a, a small enterprise because these are all uh, crucial factors in your business that once you know this much of money is going to come for your forecasting of funds in your account it becomes much more easier and convenient for the as far as the client is concerned similarly you have the post terminals that is banks offer these post terminals what are these post terminals basically the machines that facilitate payment of uh, you know um, uh, transactions through cards debit cards credit cards right so these are post terminals and these terminals are also post terminals are also used for aadhar enabled payment systems now okay uh, you know that is a, a other part that you are coming what, what you have seen you all of us all of you must have seen that advertisement where a postman comes to the house and then takes the fingerprint and makes the payment to the customer and the customer can a customer's account can be in any bank so it is basically uh, a payment that is done uh, uh through uh, by verification of the uh, aadhar details and the account that is linked to that particular aadhar right so uh, uh, i am sure all of, many of you must have seen that facility being advertised in post offices basically banks need not have do that because they have they offer all other facilities so it may not be very significant in terms of a uh service but as far as a postman or a post office is concerned this is very significant because they go to the even the uh, most unbanked areas and when they offer this it is of great convenience to the customers <clears throat> so now i go to the next slide i am sure i i hope you you are seeing that if you are not seeing please tell me yeah nash this is called the national payments uh, corporation of india another enabler for all these technology development because it has nothing to do with payments and services of course they they handle a lot of things but then they are basically enables enablers for all these uh, services uh, national payments corporation of india is basically an umbrella organization for all retail payment systems in india okay and this was set up under the guidelines of uh, reserve bank of india and indian banks association npci was uh, incorporated in the year 2008 why i'm saying this is you may have questions on this what is npci when it was incorporated what does it do so that is what we are uh, trying to 
uh, look at. It was uh, it was set up under the guidance and support of RBI and Indian Banks Association. It was incorporated in the year two thousand eight. Uh, as per you know, as a Section Twenty Five company, okay, under the Companies Act, okay, <clears throat> and now and now it is under Section Eight of the Companies Act two thousand thirteen, and it is aimed to operate for the uh, benefit of all the member banks and their customers. So the idea is to uh, make a, a meeting ground. Uh, the National Payment uh, Corporation is basically an umbrella. Or a platform where the customers and banks meet, right? And that can be customers of one bank and a and a different bank also. Similarly, uh, one bank and customers of different banks also. So this uh, that is the uh, best part of uh, this umbrella, okay? And the, th there is another one called the National Financial Switch. Uh, you know, this is this is again. Uh, by an uh, by an institute called IDRBT, the Institute for Development and Research in Banking Technology, which is based in Hyderabad. See, the objective was to make ATM deployment economical. That is basically to uh, make uh, the ATMs the uh, you know to make it economical as far as the banks is concerned for in terms of their operational costs. And also viable to all members who are offering the services, and this is by pooling the resources from various member banks and increase the usage of ATMs uh, for the customers. So that is how, that is how the uh, the national financial switch came, and uh, people of one particular the customers of one particular bank can use that ATM card on a different bank's. Uh, ATM. That is, if you are a customer of Punjab National Bank, you can use your ATM card at an SBI ATM or at a, an IDBI Bank ATM or an HDFC Bank ATM or an ICICI Bank ATM or a Bank of Baroda ATM. So that kind of interoperability, that is what it is called. So using one bank's ATM card at another bank's, uh, uh, you know, ATM. Similarly, on the white label ATMs or brown label ATMs, like what we explained earlier, where you do, the, the ATM is not belonging to any particular bank, but it is only belonging to a or owned by a separate uh, authorized agency. Okay, so you can use any card there. Similarly, <clears throat> so that is the benefit that you have, uh, uh, you know, with, with this national financial switch. And this this came into existence. This is again uh, the, this national financial switch was taken over by National Payments Corporation of India in December 2009. Okay, from IDRBT, IDRBT uh, did all the initial work uh, initiation in this uh, on this, and then it was taken over by the uh, NPCI. <clears throat> so it is a shared uh, payment network as far as ATMs is concerned, and the service is 24 bar 7. Okay. Right. Now you have the unified payment interface. Okay, which is called UPI. Okay, and UPI is also an instant payment system, which is developed by NC NPCI. Okay, uh, initially it started as uh, immediate uh, money payment system called uh, IMPS, but now. Uh, it has completely taken over the payment scenario. Now it has become so, uh, uh, you know, uh, common that even a small vendor outside, like a, you know, a barber saloon or a small vegetable vendor or a milk vendor, all of them have this. Even a, <clears throat> even a mobile vending cart uses the uh, UPI QR code or the UPI address uh, for uh, receiving payments. You know, for the uh, goods that they uh, sell to the uh, vendors or to the customers. So that is on the UPI system. Now I'm going to the next slide, which is called the National Automated Clearing House. See why we are talking about all this? Because these are all technology based operations and these are all technology based platforms which have changed 
the way in which we do transactions in a bank okay and or which have changed the way and the behavior of the customers also uh, you know as far as banking transactions are concerned if you are not able to give these services the customer is not going to be with you okay because convenience time uh, taken cost all these are the basic concerns as far as the customer is concerned so which whosoever offers it at a, at a very competent rate the customer will switch to that bank okay so that is why all these agent all these organizations all these uh, you know uh, these services or the uh, uh, people who are rendering these services became much more prominent uh, in the current economic scenario or on the uh, payments uh, platform payments and settlements platform not just payments settlement also like you know you in in the capital market you have daily transactions uh, buying and selling of shares happening like it happens through brokers right of course you may have a demat account with a bank but then again it is linked to a broker uh, through uh, through the uh, through that demat account when you sell or buy you will <clears throat> when you are buying shares you will provide funds in your account to in that linked account and the broker gets that notification uh, with your intention your order for purchase of those shares and within that settlement date normally t plus 1 t plus 2 and it gets settled and the money gets debited from your account and it goes to the broker and to the capital market through the broker right so all these things are so interlinked and it happens almost on a real time basis on a on an online basis so it keeps the time frames so there is lot of convenience for the customer so that is the uh, benefit that is being uh, given to the customers and the national uh, automated clearing house is another one okay for automated clearance for repeated payments for repeated receipts and that, this is again implemented by the the national automated clearing house which is called nach is implemented by the national payments corporation of india okay it is again a web based solution to facilitate interbank high volume transactions repeated transactions uh, you know like your payment of your emi uh, your payment of your installments payment of your telephone bills payment of your uh, utility charges okay similarly payment of subsidies uh, from the government point of view payment of pensions so all bulk payments Uh, most because it will be spread over a large number of people across the country so in one payment of dividends uh, uh, another example so in all such payments you know where uh, you know it goes through one stroke it goes directly to the accounts of the beneficiaries okay in the earlier in the earlier scenario it used to be called the electronic clearing service which is now uh, again a, a step further and uh, upgraded uh, through the uh, national payments clearing house uh, national automated clearing house which is again implemented by national payments corporation of india yeah <clears throat> so that is on the uh, national automated clearing house uh, you have here, even in the national automated clearing house you have something called an aadhar payment bridge where the payment is again uh, based on the link that you have with the account uh, and your aadhar uh, number okay so the aadhar payment bridge that is also taken care by the uh, national automated clearing house which is again implemented by the npci yeah then you have another service called star 99 hash service okay i'm sure those people who do not have a smartphone you have this uh, short messaging service you know through your sms on the on the normal uh, phone you dial the number star 99 hash 
then it will ask you a certain set of questions or it will give you a certain set of directions based on that you can get your service fulfilled like, like you know it may be a balance inquiry it may be a, a request for a checkbook or it may be any other uh, uh, this one okay so this is again uh, an off a service offered by the telecom service provider uh, it may be in the case of you know uh, depending on the kind of service provider that your phone uh, you have chosen it may be bsnl it may be airtel it may be vodafone or it may be even your geo so depending on that you use the same standard service and it is available in 12 different languages okay <coughs> hindi english all that is available there okay so that is on that hash 9 uh, sorry star 99 hash service that is available on the older phones now you have the electronic benefit transfer this is again a product offered uh, you know uh, under financial inclusion where you know to uh, to the government was thinking that you know the uh, the presence of middlemen in in most of the uh, payments and settlements uh, created a lot of uh, inconvenience to the ultimate beneficiaries when it percolates down down to the beneficiary sometimes the value gets lost or the value gets eroded so in order to ensure that whatever is transferred goes fully into the beneficiary ultimate beneficiary's account this is the electronic benefit transfer was uh, introduced like in the case of you know uh, payment of wages uh, for rural employment generation programs payment of uh, subsidies payment of scholarships uh, for, especially for different sets of people uh, you know within our society like your fisheries your farmers uh, or pensioners so all these uh, so this benefit uh, it is a product offered under the financial inclusion program. A separate committee by RBI was set up. It was headed by Dr. R. B. Berman, and that was a committee which enabled this uh, system to come into force. So over a period of time, it has stabilized well, and this is again handled by the NPCI platform. <clears throat> Another payment uh, method is the rupee. Okay. Uh, as far as uh, the other payment methods were concerned, like Visa or Diners or American Express or Masters, they were all foreign payment systems. Okay, they were external to our country. What What is the problem in having such uh, payment uh, systems? One of you, please. No, I I, I think uh, you know uh, some of you should also originate uh, questions or uh, you know uh, or points then only there will be a, um, a fruitful discussion on this what is the benefit and what is the <clears throat> difficulty one of you please tell me of having only visa or master or a diners one of you please Of course, the rupee came into the picture only to, only on the same platform to uh, to handle the work that is handled by to handle the work that was earlier transacted by a visa or master. Okay. Why rupee? It has input insurance facilities. It has uh, insurance is one thing. Yes. I, even even visa master they also offer all that but you know rupee came with uh, that offer yes i do agree what else it's a one pardon me sorry i am not able to. Uh, it was an indigenous yeah. one it oh, is an indigenous one definitely so oh. whatever is indian you know it is you know for us to accept that but more than all this uh you know you are a customer right of a credit card or a or a usage of visa or mastercard all the details with regard to you is available with that visa or mastercard and all those information is stored 
in a place away from India. What does it mean? It means that as a person, as an ultimate user of that facility, the visa or master has all the information about you and it is controlled from a place outside the country. That means within India, we have no control or no way in which the information is shared of an Indian consumer, right? If you're a foreign consumer, yes, no problem in that. But why should our information go to a different set of people who are stationed outside the country? Their servers are stationed outside the country. All the transactions, your consumer behavior patterns, like, you know, you may have different, different consumer behaviors. Sometimes people may be interested only in clothing. Sometimes people may be interested only in electronic gadgets. So your behavior is captured by the transactions in all these cards and, uh, uh, you know, different methods of payments, right? So if you, uh, to a banker, I don't have to tell you, if you look at a transactions in one particular account, you will be able to predict the behavior of the customer, right? Will you agree with me or not? Yes, sir. It, it will give a lot of insights into what kind of a customer is this, what is his preference, where does he spend more money, whether it is on food items, whether it is on clothes, whether it is on uh, luxury items, whether it is on cars, right? So all this, uh, you know, information comes. And all this information goes to a person sitting outside the country. Is it good? Yes. It's not a good thing. So that is how the so the rupee, the servers are within our country and all the information reside within the country. So the information about the consumer who is an Indian doesn't go outside the country. So that is the second benefit. Then it is much more secure because what happens if something happens there in the other end? For a, Of course, it has not happened because they have adequate safeguards for that by using disaster centers place them in different different centers so that you can just like your bank servers no placed in uh, disaster recovery centers uh, if something happens and for unfortunate happens in one center then it get, the entire transaction gets switched or mirrored to another uh, server and then your transaction goes on as smooth as so similarly these visa master and all those, all those all those people have those arrangements also but then the benefit is that the information resides within the country and your private information which is personal in nature does not go to a third party right so that is the benefit and that is why this came into the picture and that is why currently our regulator reserve bank is india reserve bank of india is very particular that all such people should have their even if they are outside the country that will visa master they should have their servers placed within the country that is in india it cannot be placed outside the country so that they are very particular okay right so that is the benefit it's only for your information and when somebody asks you the question at either at an interview or uh, you know for you should be prepared yeah that's the reason so now we will go to the next one. Uh, so the benefit, uh, yeah, the, when it comes to rupee service, rupee also offers like what I said, the cash back, you know, your discounts. Uh, it is accepted across the ATMs at all. Now rupee is accepted in even outside the country, United Arab Emirates, uh, and slowly it will it will become like another uh, visa or master with acceptable uh, acceptability all over the world. Okay, that is the ultimate. But then the tra tra transactions in rupee cards have also increased uh, quite uh, substantially in the uh, recent years. And it has been accepted well by customers who are using it. Okay. So that is the best part of it. <clears throat> so now we'll go to the uh, next slide. What are the benefits that you get? So the uh, benefit is that Indian market itself is a very huge potential market. So the cards, uh, the penetration, there is a lot of scope. Like what you're, uh, you know, we are slowly transplanting visa and master usage because many people have different cards. So uh, they may have a visa card, they may have a master card, they may have a diner's card, or they may have a American Express card. Still, uh, you know, use a rupee card 
for your domestic transactions then the the, the transactions in, on that front will also increase either uh, either on the debit card or or on the credit card okay so uh, it has it uh, over a period of time rupee cards have uh, accept uh, have gained the same level of acceptability like a visa or mastercard okay and uh, the transactions have also been seamless there have been no uh, uh, not much uh, uh, hassles as far as a customer is concerned in settling the payments or in in receiving the remittances <clears throat> And the other thing is the lower co cost of affordability. The cost of transactions have also come down with the uh, arrival of rupee, right? In the earlier scenario, the charges that used to be uh, detected by these people like Visa and Master were substantially higher. But with the advent of rupee, these, uh, these charges had to be brought down by them also because they had to compete with rupee. So rupee. So uh, there also, who is the ultimate beneficiary? Who is the beneficiary? The customer, no? Because he is getting the same services at a reduced cost. So he is the beneficiary, right? Actually, somebody say yes. yes. So I am audible to all, I hope. Sir, so, but bank is purchasing that card. Pardon me? Bank is purchasing at higher cost. Visa Bank. cards. Bank. No, no. See, Visa is offering the cards to the bank at a competitive level, uh, you know, that rupee is offering. So ultimately, who is the beneficiary? Okay, sir. Because when rupee offers, it offers the services at a lower cost, other people like Visa and Master, they will also be forced to reduce the charges. So the beneficiary, ultimate beneficiary, so bank will not have a problem. Bank can use Rupee, bank can use Visa or Master. It all depends on which one is to be promoted by the bank. So which one will be promoted? Whichever is beneficial to the customer will be promoted. Right? Okay. So it is like a bouquet of services that you have. Whichever is beneficial to the customer, it goes to the customer, right? So that is how it happens. So with that, uh, uh, with that concept, rupee has become much more competitive. It has gained acceptability among Indian customers, and the benefit, the other benefit that I told you, because it is Indian, right? It is our own, and the servers, the information, the accord, the information of the customer on all the transactions done on that card reside within the country right it doesn't go it doesn't it is not managed outside so the information does not go to a third country or a third person to watch the uh, you know for a, to observe you as a customer because where, you know as i told earlier that when you look at the transactions your behavior is studied by that other person and then a product is marketed to you based on the behavior that you've seen reflected in those statements. That is how China became a world leader in marketing its various products. Because they started observing the spending patterns, the behavior patterns of people across the world. And then started giving them products which is suitable to them. Right? Whether it is in India or in US or in Europe. They started, uh, uh, you know, products which are palatable to those specific customers in these different areas. So that is the su success story as far as that country is concerned. Similarly, for, you know, as far as, uh, you know, India is concerned, we have the Rupee uh, platform, which will again reflect only the, uh, the, the behavioral patterns which reside within the country. It doesn't go to a different country or to a third party for observation or analysis okay so the the, the people within the country will analyze and then uh, try to bring in products or services which are suitable for depending on the different tastes of that customer that is the point that i have to tell <clears throat> yeah
then protection of uh, information related to uh, indian customers yes i told you about that security part yeah and the transaction data related to tra that resides within india that that will stay within the country and it doesn't go outside the uh, country because it doesn't fall into the hands of a third party yeah yeah and it provides electronic uh, product op uh, options uh, to all the people to maximum number of people right is a visa or a master that familiar with a rural population in the country no but rupee has become because it has become an acceptable transaction uh, intermediary that way okay so that is the benefit and of course the cost part also that that is also to be taken to now going to the next uh, next slide uh, which is on mobile banking transactions okay mobile banking again uh, it is another payment system that was uh, this came into existence in 2007 act uh, 51 of 2007 okay payments payment and settlement act okay regulatory and supervision issues uh, the uh, the banks licensed and supervised in india have a physical presence in india only they can offer this uh, mobile banking okay the services are restricted to customers of banks and it is not offered to any anybody else okay uh, uh, it is offered to holders of debit and credit cards issued as per the extend rbi guidelines so the regulations apply for this only rupee based domestic transactions <clears throat> can be provided through the mobile banking services uh banks may also use uh, business correspondence uh, uh, for extending this facility then uh, banks will whenever there is a suspicious transaction like what we have in uh, we will report we will send it in the str report the sus sus suspicious transaction report so that facility is also to the financial intelligence unit of the country so that facility is also there then interoperability banks offering uh, mobile banking service must ensure that customers having mobile phones of any network operator that is it can be interoperable like you know uh, it can be through uh, airtel or bsnl or vodafone or your B uh, or your uh, uh, you know jio okay so that facility interoperable service provider it can be uh, the mobile banking services because when you use the mobile banking and you are an airtel subscriber uh, it is not that you can make payments or receive payments only from another airtel subscriber you can transact with any other uh, you know uh, client who is a subscriber of any other telephone service provider <clears throat> then the transaction limits are fixed by the respective banks normally within a capacity of uh, 50000 uh, this again the bank's policy uh, to prescribe the limits uh, for transactions uh, through mobile banking uh, banks may also prescribe per transaction limit yeah, i am sure all of you must be aware of this because when you make uh, transactions on your uh, you know mobile banking uh, when you purchase, make bulk purchases at a clothes store or a, or a white goods store like a you know, TV or a, uh, you know, air conditioner or whatever, okay, or a laptop, you know, depending on the limit that you prescribe, uh, then you may be able to make payments on that. And then, of course, uh, <clears throat> the technology and the security standards are prescribed uh, for all the mobile banking <coughs> users and the and the service providers also as far as the banks is concerned the security standards they are prescribed and they have to necessarily follow those guidelines the banks uh, technology division or the technology group will take care of all those or whoever is providing the services for smaller banks 
there are uh, you know there's an external agency maybe giving that services but they all of them are required to follow these guidelines in letter and spirit yeah and uh, a transactions up to the amount of 5000 cannot need not be encrypted and anything about that there will be will have to be encrypted because it has to be encrypted and then only the encrypted transformation uh, encrypted information passes okay so what is the what is the benefit of encryption it starts from one point and ends at the other point so uh, it will be decrypted at the other end so when as and when it passes it will be in encrypted form and and a third party will not be able to interfere in that transaction so that is the benefit so in terms of security for the transaction and next we come to internet banking <clears throat> Again, I don't think uh, uh, I need to say uh, more on this because all of you might be using this on a regular basis. Uh, you know, uh, for you as a uh, for your own personal win, and you as a an employee of the bank guiding the customers also. So, as I said earlier, it is a connection through an internet uh, service provider like your Airtel or BSNL also. And is a, it is a, and a connection is established through an interface protocol software that is called uh, IPS between the bank server and the service provider and the ultimate uh, beneficiary or the, or the customer. Okay. <clears throat> Basically, in India, there are two protocols. One is a serial line protocol and the point to point protocol that is available. This is basically a technology aspect, it is only for your understanding. Whether you know how how does internet banking work work? It works basically because there is an internet service provider. Then only you can uh, make that happen. Then there is a bank server which communicates with the internet service provider, and that communication happens through a software. That is the protocol software, interface protocol software. And these are of two different types, two different protocols. One is a serial line protocol, and the other one is point to point protocol. Yeah. <clears throat> then we also need a browser software like your internet explorer your google chrome your mozilla or opera whatever it is on your on your computer you need a browser to uh, communicate through the internet banking and with the help of a modem uh, the uh, the internet communication is complete and that the the internet service provider like your Airtel, Geo, or they make all the facilitation for that. So the internet banking happens through that channel, through a username and specific password. So once you give the username and password, the entry is gained to the to the other end. And all the facilities that are available through the internet banking your account transfers your account inquiries your account statements your uh, making of an fd making a nomination making a change making a request for a checkbook making a request for a statement seeing your dmat account making an application through asba for shares in the initial public offers your dmat account details your uh, ppf account details your npf account nps account details so all these are available then um, uh, setting limits on your card usage setting limits on your uh, e-commerce platform for internet banking transfers making transfers outside the country foreign exchange transactions all this is possible through the internet bank <clears throat> Now we will come to another one called the National Electronic Funds Transfer Facility, NEFT. All of you know. Again, this is uh, this was operationalized by uh, uh, RBI in November 2005. Uh, what does it facilitate? It facilitates transfer of funds from any branch to any branch of one bank or any other bank. Okay, uh, NEFT for of the same bank. Normally, it is an uh, electronic fund transfer. But for a different bank, it becomes a uh, electronic fund transfer. Yeah. 
the parties can be customers it can be banks it can be corporates it can be service centers it can be clearing centers it can be uh, you know brokers it can be non banking finance companies so anybody can be a party to those transactions and uh, what about the amount amount as prescribed earlier it was 2 lakhs now it is 5 lakhs am i right for any ft anyone please for any ft one of you please hello sir i think it is 2 lakhs what is it sorry i couldn't hear you not sure sir as far as i know it is 5 lakhs but then uh, about the uh, uh, about the amount you uh, you know you get clarity or i will also check on that uh, and then come back okay <clears throat> and anything about that will go for the uh, rtg assistant okay so yeah, i think now that limit for neft has been taken over uh, taken out completely i think that is uh, what i feel there's no limit for neft sir, no. uh, yes sir no limit for neft it has been completely taken over uh, yeah. taken off the only yes. thing is that it is uh, the method of uh, funds transfer uh, what one happening happens in batches that is the other one and happens on a uh, real time uh, basis uh, under the rtgs yeah so the uh, the that limit i stand corrected that limit stands uh, that limit has been taken off now and then uh, only thing is the settlement happens in batches in the case of neft whereas in the case of rtgs it goes uh, real time uh, online yes uh, and what happens is once you give a request for this uh, transfer it is uh, irrevocable and it gets immediately uh, executed and when you know only thing is if it is not able to be if the transaction is not able to be effected it comes back in a different batch okay and then the bank the initiating bank will in inform the customer that it has not gone through and it has not and that particular transfer has not been effected on account of these these reasons and the amount will be credited back to the account so there will be an advice of refund uh, given to the uh, customer by the originating bank <clears throat> yes and the next one is real time gross settlement Uh, this is again uh, introduced introduced in the year 2004 uh, basically for uh, settlements uh, of interbank uh, settlements and then later on became very popular for other transactions as well so there is a management committee to uh, oversee the transactions and it considers members uh, and it consists of members from rbi and from banks and other stakeholders uh basically for uh, uh these operations okay and uh, who who can who all can do it is open to all the banks and uh, and uh, and other institutions also as permitted by the uh committee of management yeah and there is a uh, there is a requirement for a membership for this uh, uh, uh rtgs uh, facility and uh, you know you will have to have uh, a membership then your uh, you know uh, network you will have to have your current account you will have to have your settlement account you will have to have a subsidiary general account with re with regard to transactions with uh, with the government or with regard to some government securities or with uh, uh, you no know, especially for cooperative banks uh, you know when they bank uh, when they make these transactions through the support of another bank so they need these uh, sub sd uh, sub subsidiary general ledger accounts with rbi so that is mandated so these are the requirements 
and there are regular participants such as banks there are restricted participants such as primary dealers dealers in the money market so they they are also participants then of course uh, uh, there are clearing houses like the uh, you know the um, uh, um, clearing houses which settle the share transactions okay uh, so that uh, they are also members of this <clears throat> And what are the types of RG, uh, uh, RTGS transactions? They are inter-institutional and inter-RBI. There are customer transactions because these, uh, you know, these questions, uh, the, this may be important for, for you from the point of view of uh, multiple uh, choice questions. Uh, RTGS transaction types will be inter-institutional. They will be inter-RBI transactions. There will be customer transactions, government transactions, multilateral net settlement transactions. Sometimes it will be a settlement transaction. Uh, basically, I was talking to you about the uh, you know the big deals in bonds, in corporate, uh, in the equity segment, in the uh, foreign exchange segment. So for settlement of those transactions, there will be. Uh, net settlement like you know the, there will be buy purchases and sales so only the net amount will be settled through the transaction just like your clearing house scenario in the earlier uh, concept as far as a bank is concerned so only the net amount is settled uh, what is inward and what is outward the net difference it is uh, it is settled through a bank account which is maintained either normally through state bank of india or the clearing banker in that particular area so similarly, for transactions involving, uh, you know, uh, uh, purchases and sales of bonds, securities, so the net settlement happens through the uh, 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 through that uh, uh, specific account. <clears throat> And then uh, own account transfers maintained at, uh, through maintained at different banks or different agencies. That also can happen through uh, RTGS. Then, of course, the return payment transaction that can also happen through RTGS, where where a transaction, a particular transaction originated, does not get affected, then it comes back again. Return uh, comes through the RTGS. So these are the different types of transactions that you have. Basically, these are uh, uh, these are uh, you know segregated in such a way that each of those transactions have dif given different codes. So it will be easier for you for the uh, people to analyze what type of transactions happen through the uh, uh, through this particular uh, method of payment. And settlement through RTGS. Yeah. Basically, for the purpose of analysis, you you will be given different codes for each type of transaction. Yes. Now let us look at some of the uh, new developments here. Uh, one one the latest uh, one such uh, new development is the framework for making offline payments. Like, you know, earlier uh, we were talking about uh, online payments through your mobile, through your internet. Through, but now it is also possible to make offline payments. Offline payments uh, made by using any channel, uh, you know, uh, uh, through a normal uh, uh, phone or instruments like cards, it can be uh, done. Or through wallets, like what we mentioned earlier, no? Uh, in one of the earlier slides, it was uh, discussed through wallets, or through mobile devices. And offline payments shall be made in uh, in proximity, face to face mode only. <clears throat> that that you know, for people who cannot afford or who do not have the uh, uh, the necessary wherewithal to complete the transaction on an electronic basis so, so such pay, for for the benefit of such people you have we have introduced these 
especially people uh, uh, who have no access to uh, um, you know higher levels of technology okay so this is meant for such people and offline payment transaction may be offered with additional factor of authentic uh, you know uh, authentication right so this is basically you know for like your every uh, uh, transaction if somebody has uh, somebody is initiating he has to authenticate the transaction just like in a bank branch when somebody initiates a transaction on on your system there is somebody else who is verifying but here it is the same person we, when i originate i give an additional factor to confirm that it is i am doing this and i am doing this under these these conditions and i am doing this under this particular amount so to to validate all those you give an additional factor for authentication and that is also given by way of a password or by way of given by way of a otp uh, one time password yeah and these offline uh, transactions are uh, done at the explicit consent of the customer uh, you know acha and there is one more condition here where you know uh, you must have seen in uh, most of the cards that are issued uh, uh, nowadays you have an option for contactless pay payments also right even without inserting the card in the post machine just by waving or just by tapping you can make the payment so but in the case of uh, offline payments uh, you know uh, it cannot be made by uh, it can be, cannot be made through such uh, cards which have the contactless payment facility okay <clears throat> and the upper limit for an offsite uh, for an offline payment transaction shall be is currently prescribed at rupees 200 and the total limit for offline transaction on a payment instrument under one particular instrument or, or, or on a wallet or on a card the total number of payments that can be total number of uh, payments can be only up to a limit of 2000 at any point in time so you can make a payment one single payment will be 200 and the total uh, offline transactions at any point of time it has to be restricted to an amount of 2000 and once that is used you will have a replenishment of the use limit also that is uh, uh, that is possible that is uh, like what you in a in a wallet you may uh, you make a uh, deposit of 2000 rupees the maximum that you use for one particular transaction is 200 so you can make 10 such transactions of 200 rupees and then when you make uh, if all transactions are for 200 rupees yes in 10 transactions the limit gets over 2000 gets over then you will have to replenish it fresh okay the wallet needs to be replenished with another deposit of 2000 and then you can keep on using that um, a 2000 for future transactions it can the the our upper limit is 200 it can be for 1 rupee it can be for 50 rupees it can be for 100 rupees or 150 rupees but per transaction it is 200 rupees so that is how it is prescribed as far as the offline payments are concerned Uh, are you continuing whether we can it's nearing time okay so i have only i think only two slides uh, okay. i will pass the, no this is basically what we were uh, uh, you know uh, the with regard to the prepaid instruments maybe we can circulate this uh, um, i know that paper on prepaid instruments uh, to the people yeah yeah, yeah. Along with the, so yeah. i will not uh, touch upon that because this is again prepaid instruments now there is a change it is up to ten thousand rupees per month low the uh, the money that can be loaded into the wallet or uh, the card it is ten thousand rupees and maximum not exceeding 1.2 lakhs in a year and the full kyc is required and uh, ppis will be issued for purchase of goods and services that is possible 
and RBI has also said PPI issuer shall be a board approved policy. And uh, uh, you know, it is not just banks, even NBFC, other uh, permitted agencies can uh, issue these uh, prepaid instruments. The other one, so we will circulate that paper with all the people so that they can get uh, uh, full details uh, on that uh, prepaid instruments paper. Uh, the paper is circulated by Reserve Bank of India. Okay. Yeah. And then the other one is on the central bank's digital currency. This is again of uh, latest uh, uh, introduction. The bank, the, there was a proposal and it was examined. And finally, RBI has now started using it for settling uh, initially bulk government transactions. And slowly, maybe a time will come very soon where even your salaries will come in a digital uh, currency format. It will fall into a wallet. And then you can use it either as a digital currency or you will have the option of switching it to your uh, bank account depending on your convenience. So this facility may come very soon. So uh, right now it is, I think, Bangalore, uh, it is available, Chennai, uh, then Delhi. Uh, um, Mumbai, and it will slowly come to other centers also. So where you know, basically, it is again the currency resides in wallets, and the, and the spend is from those wallets only. So it will not earn any interest for you, whereas the money lying in your savings or account or on a on a linked current account, current account of course will not earn uh, learn, uh, uh, will not give you earning. But uh, savings definitely will definitely earn some interest, uh, you know, as per the savings uh, interest rate. But that facility will not be uh, there in a digital currency wallet. Okay, it will not earn interest. But only thing is, you can keep it in a wallet and keep on spending money. There is a the, you can track the transactions in that wallet. That is possible, just like your account statement. Only thing is. Yeah, the, it is at the even smaller amounts, uh, which will not uh, make a great impact on your spends. You can put them in this wallet and keep uh, spending. But you will you you have the facility of tracking such payments also. <clears throat> and this gives uh, uh, real benefits to customers for the ultimate users. They can lower transaction costs. They don't have to carry cash. The, you know, uh, the security concerns are uh, uh, not there because it lies in an electronic wallet. And uh, there are no uh, risks attached with uh, uh, pilferage or with, um, you know, uh, you know uh, by losing the money, uh, you know, when you carry it in a physical format. OK. And uh, when when it gets evolved, like any other uh, uh, system, like our cards, debit cards, credit cards, this digital currency also will get evolved over a period of time. And there will be ways and means to <clears throat> get it uh, you know, streamlined over a period of time. And uh, the ease of operation and basically uh, the acceptability of digital currency also as a legal tender Little, it is expected to come over a period of time, as and when we use it more and more for different purposes. So that time will also come. Then the last one is with regard to ONDC. Uh, you know uh, that is the Open uh, Network for Digital Commerce. This is again an aggregator system where. All the people concerned in the purchasers, the buyers, uh, you know, the buyers and the sellers, they come under a common platform. Like, you know, what you do now under Flipkart or your Amazon, or what you do under your uh, Uber or Ola for your travel, the entire gamut comes under one platform. Okay. So uh, it is an it is an now ONDC is now in an early stage of implementation in Bangalore. It is uh, the nearest as far as Kerala is concerned. It is uh, in Bangalore. It is being implemented, but it is yet to pick up. The number of registrations are still not that significant. What will happen is it will provide a common platform for all buyers and sellers, and all of them will 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 be registered under this platform. 
and you have access as a customer you have access to all these registered entities for your requirement and then making a payment uh, you know through that platform to for you to acquire that particular uh, uh, you know tangible product or even a service so that is what it says so uh, this is implemented uh, uh, through the quality council of india and the protein uh, e government technologies they are the initial promoters and there are other institutions like your you know banks many banks are there as uh, uh, you know uh, promoters and there are many uh, non banking financial uh, companies also as promoters what are the benefits for this the benefits to the customer is that the av availability of wide range of choices because there will be so many people who have registered who are sellers in the market so you have a wide range you have a wide choice so that is one benefit from your examination question point of view then you have an ex expanded access because you have uh, you you it is not that it is locally uh, local centric it is you know you your access is all across the country so you have an option you know depending on the the availability and the expertise of different people at different geographies you have your access so that is uh, another uh, point then the acquisition cost will be lower because it is a direct interaction there is no intermediary involved okay there is no retailer there is no there is no wholesaler there is no it uh, you know a third party that is a broker who is involved in uh, reaching the good to you goods or service to you so your interaction will be directly with the whosoever is providing that goods or service so your transaction cost also will come down okay and there will be greater level of transparency transparency is that you know you 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 know which uh, product or which service you need so according to that specification you can make a request on this platform and a person who will have a product or service which will match that re uh, requirement will give you say i have this product for you so you have a transparent way of dealing with it it is not like uh, saying that this is the kind of product that we have and when you unpack it uh, once you make the payment and when you unpack it you find that it is a different product okay so there is greater level of transparency also there so that is the benefit of this but then this is just at the implementation stage and we hope it will become uh, popular over a period of time and it has great potential as far as a country like india is concerned okay so with that i think uh, i will so, uh, thank you we will take it so much of uh, uh, and this to uh, for pay taking all the covering all the portions up to beyond 10 o'clock sir so uh, many 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 of um, some of them have left any of i will share this uh, material to them so that they can use it sir it was okay. it was very uh, very useful points all are uh, examination oriented so uh, if you can share the ppt i'll share with them yeah tomorrow. i'll share it straight away i will share it with that uh, with these uh, um... yeah thank you sir i'll share it with them tomorrow okay Thank you very much sir thank you thanks a lot